This time it's five more 80cc classic motorcycles. Over the years there have been some quite unusual capacities that have grown up to be popular around the world. 80cc is just one of them. It was very popular in the UK in the 1980s and also in Europe in the 1970s, being both cheaper to insure and cheaper to run than its normal 100cc or 125cc competition and yet can offer very similar performance. And so here are five classic 80cc motorcycles. The Yamaha RD80 LC. Produced between 1982 and 1987, the RD80 is very much a slimmed down, slightly smaller version of the RD125. And as such, in the UK it wasn't as successful. This is partially because the bike was technically as sophisticated as 125 Stablemate, meaning that the price was very similar to the 125, which sort of negated the whole point of producing an 80 in the UK. Kawasaki's AR80 on the van was an upscaled 50, so it was cheaper, lighter, and much easier to produce than the AR125, and was much more successful than the RD, although not nearly as sophisticated or as quick. Like its bigger brother, the RD80 ran a liquid cooled, single cylinder, two stroke engine that produced around 10 horsepower. And this coupled with a dry weight of just 78 kilos meant that the bike was surprisingly nippy and would no doubt embarrass one or two four-stroke 125s around today. The bike ran a single shock rear end. This was very much on trend at that time, having first appeared in off-roaders and now making its way to the racetrack and the road too. For braking, there's a drum at the rear and a very small single disc at the front, although given the weight of the bike, this should cope reasonably well. But this is not merely a sleeve down 125. The machine looks physically smaller and sleeker than its bigger brother. Even that bikini fairing at the front is actually a sleeker version of that used on the 125. But sleek and stylish or not, the bike was ultimately not a commercial success, at least in the UK. It seems all that technical sophistication, the sleek lines, the six-speed gearbox and water-cooled engine all came at a price. And it meant that the RD was a premium product, in fact a bit too premium for the 80cc class. And after five years of production, it would be taken out of the UK market after selling a rather disappointing number of bikes. The AR rated by comparison was much less sophisticated but much more commercially successful. The Honda XL80 S The XL80 S was a dual sport motorcycle made by Honda for five years between 1980 and 1985. The machine used a steel twin shock frame and in it was housed the overhead cam 80cc single cylinder four stroke engine. The engine was robust and frugal but produced just 6.3 horsepower, that's about 4.7 kilowatts at 8000 rpm. This was then fed through a four speed gearbox and then onto that tiny 14 inch rear wheel by a conventional chain. And at the front was an equally diminutive 16 inch front wheel and braking front and rear was via drums. This was fairly standard for the day, disc brakes not really becoming popular on off-roaders for a few years just yet. The bike went at a claimed 72 kilos dry. This actually seems very light but isn't much lighter than say the RD. Given that mini bike feel, seat height was just 718 mils. I must say that this machine rather reminds me of the rock that I featured in the last video. It's very small and really to me looks like a child's bike. But it is road legal, it's fitted with lights, indicators and all you would need and it's quite legal at least in the United States to take the bike out on the road. However after 1985 the bike was replaced by the XR and as far as I'm aware the XR does not come with road kit and cannot be registered for use on the road, at least not in the United States and I don't believe anywhere in Europe or Great Britain either. For me the XR seems a very strange machine, it really does look a child's bike and the fact that it's fitted with lights and indicator kit and can be used on the road seems very odd to British eyes I think. And as far as I'm aware the smallest XL available in Britain was the XL100 which was a physically much larger machine and much more of standard size. The XL may be very small but it is tough and there's still quite a few survivors out there being bashed around on fields and used on farmland somewhere in the world. 
and the machine is the place where many motorcycle journeys have begun. The Suzuki A80. Now to anybody who cut their teeth on the AP or A50, and I count myself as one of those, this is a very familiar machine, because it is just a slightly enlarged version of the 50, having just a 72cc engine. Not surprising, the machine does share a lot of features with the A50 and A100 models. The machine arrived in 1973, just in time for the fuel crisis, and was marketed as a slimmed down, cheaper, more basic version of the A100. In fact, early versions even omitted the automatic lubrication system, so you had to pre-mix the oil. An unusual feature by that point on Japanese machines. And unlike its AP50 cousin, the machine had just a 4-speed manual gearbox. Dimensionally, of course, the machine is very similar to its 50cc cousin. So very small and not very heavy either. And seat height is a fairly standard 780 mils. I have to say that finding film on this machine has proved rather difficult. There's a lot of film out there, the 100cc and of course the 50cc versions, but the 80 seems a fairly rare beast. Although it did sell pretty well, I think, in Asia. In an Indian market, it seemed very popular indeed, and there are quite a few Indian videos featuring the bike. And indeed, in parts of Asia, the machine would be fairly successful, remaining in production right into the 1980s. Now, the R80 used a single-cylinder, air-cooled, two-stroke engine. It used disc valve induction, but produced a fairly modest 7.6 horsepower at 7,500 RPM. This meant that despite only weighing 83 kilos, Top speed again was a fairly modest 56 miles an hour, around 80 kilometers an hour. So a fairly modest performer then, but it really wasn't designed for speed, fairly obviously. It was really a bike designed for commuting. So fuel consumption by two stroke standards is pretty good. And the bike will convey you wherever you want to go in a good, solid, reliable and relatively frugal manner. And after all, what more could you ask from a commuter bike? Idler, both the Mustang and the Fluoret. Kreidler was one of Germany's oldest manufacturers of bicycles and motorcycles. Founded in 1903, they had some Grand Prix success in their time and for the 1970s sold their machines pretty well and were successful in competition. Even so, by 1982 the company was on its knees and went bankrupt in that year. The Kreidler Fluoret 80 was introduced in 1981 in an attempt to expand the range. Of course, it's based on the 50cc models, but enlarged to just under 80ccs. And in this enlarged form, the tiny single cylinder air cooled two stroke motor made around 7.3 horsepower. Fadler Mustang had always been the sporty moped in the range and always had a very nice look to it. But by the 1980s, that sports moped concept was well and truly old hat. So instead, the Mustang 80 was rebranded as an off-road mini-adventure bike, of course becoming very trendy at the time. And a common with the Fluet, that near-horizontal 50 engine was replaced by a near-vertical 80cc engine. Performance was the same as the Fluet, but even as his 280 models appeared back in 1980, it was all too late for Kreidler. They had just two years left to run before going bust in 1980. The Jalera TG80. Jalera's TG series of single cylinder two strokes arrived in 1977. The machine was available in two capacities. There was 80cc and the 125, which is actually 122cc. The 125 was the most popular, obviously, and made around 14.5 horsepower from its piston ported single cylinder air cooled engine with a five speed gearbox. The 80cc version was visually pretty much identical, but produced a claimed 9.5 horsepower. Development of prototypes had begun in 1973, but the first production models arrived as the TG1 in 1977, and the TG1 would remain in production through until 1982, when it was replaced by an updated model, the TG2. This had fresher, more modern looking styling, a little bit more 1980s, although it was in fact 
mechanically very little changed. Also in 1981, we saw the introduction of the TG3. This was not a redevelopment of the previous models, but was in fact a custom version of the TG2, with much more curvaceous styling in petrol tank and higher bars, of course. The TG range would continue with production through until 1985, most replaced by the all-new Jalera RV series. Well, I do hope you enjoyed our collection of 80cc super little motorcycles. If you've got any other crazy collections of motorcycles you'd like to see us do a piece on, or you've got a bike we can test, please get in touch below. I do hope you enjoyed that video, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, thank you very much for watching.